He says, don't worry about what you're going to eat, drink, and all these different things. Then he says, look at the birds of the air. I've never seen a bird struggling. Yeah, never. Like them birds, they, they just took, wait for you. If you had a picnic and you yeah. just leave for one second, mm-hmm. and coming yep. down, swooping. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a sound effect. <laughs> it hey, says, can any of you, hilarious. by worrying, add a single hour to your life? I'm trying to be spiritual, man. They messing up the podcast, man. It's all good. <laughs> bro, that was a chicken, big dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. YouTube, what's up? We are back. We're back. Overtime podcast number eight. Here we go. So seven was the number of completion. Mm-hmm. Eight is the number of grace. Oh, my. I didn't know that. Learn something new every day. Grace is here, and it's sufficient. <laughs> so let's do it yo if you haven't subscribed yet what are you doing make sure to subscribe make sure to like this video and share it with somebody who is close to christ or like growing in christ all right yeah so let's just kind of pick up where we were we talked about people who are exploring christ that's typically 10 to 20 percent of people in your church then we talked about people who are Growing in Christ, that's about 25% of people in your church. The 30%, that's the largest group of people. But today, we're going to talk about people who are close to Christ. And I know what you're saying right now. You're hitting your space bar saying, that's me. Just hold on a second. We'll talk about that. But the first group of people have hard hearts. The second group of people have shallow hearts. And today, we're going to talk about the next group of people. I'm going to save that for the end, though. But we've been using Mark chapter 4 talking about the different soils, the different hearts that people have. Uh, We got this information from a book called Move, which went out to over 2,000 churches and come to find out that the churches aren't doing as well, including ours, as we thought, because we're not doing a great job discipling people. Here's the common denominator. We do a good job of giving people information But when they go back home, they don't know what to do with the information that we've given them. So life application is so important. It's huge. It's crazy. Me and my wife were talking about that this morning. How do we help people actually apply it to life? What does it even mean to be close to Christ? Because it sounds cool. But what does that actually mean to be close to Christ? These are people who are living out their faith on a daily basis. Mm. Sometimes there's a distinction between I come to church. That's the church part of me. Yeah. But I'm a while out during the week. Then I come to church again. But during the week, it does not really make a difference. So how do I use the Bible in my marriage? How do I use Mm. the Bible in my finances, on the on the job with my kids? So this is the part that I think goes from people who are growing in Christ to close to Christ when you can actually use scripture. Yeah for life application in your everyday life. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of compartmentalization. I think is the word that we use. Like this, this is just for work. This is just for family. This is just for Sunday mornings. But Christ said, and it was one of the greatest presentations of a message ever. He said said? two words, follow me, follow me. That means not just on Sunday. No, I want you to follow me into my house to see how I live. I want you to follow me every single time I talk to, to a stranger, every time, you know, I'm talking to somebody I don't like follow me because this is a lifestyle. Yeah. What I love about that whole idea of follow me, it's see the word Christian just in nature. That's a stagnant term. Just mm-hmm. think about it. Christian. Yeah. There's no movement, but yeah. follow me. Yeah. That's movement. You got to wow. continue to follow him and you like never that. arrive. Yeah. The moment you think you've arrived, that's when you go from one category to another category. That's actually you're losing the pace that God wants you to run in your race. Man, that's huge. Now, this group of people close to Christ, it says yep. that they are trying to make him a priority. Like it's it's their goal to make Christ a priority in life. But one thing I know yep. is that it can be hard, yep. especially in the 21st century, <laughs> 2024. You got social media, calendar. I'm yeah. bu- I'm I'm gonna be honest. I'm booked through December right now. So uh, if I wanted <laughs> to make Christ a priority, it might be a tad bit hard. How do we help yeah. to make Christ a priority in our life? Yeah, I always say this. So I know you're thinking about like today. I'm gonna start to run a marathon. Well, hold up a second. Like let's go three months out to yeah. four months out on your calendar, and you need to start with Christ. That's the most important thing. But look at Mark chapter four verse seven. This is the third soil. It says, "Other seed." fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plant. So they did not bear grain. And then when you get to verse 18 and 19, it says, like the thorns, people hear the word, but the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things choke the word out, making Mm. it unfruitful. 
So what is this saying? This is saying like fruit is being produced, but there's also thorns at the same time. So you actually could be producing more fruit in your life. You just don't know it because of the thorns that are going on in your life. Wow. So in other words, the relationship that you have, just your thought life, what you're worried about. And so when it comes to wealth, when it comes to worry, when it comes to worldliness, those are thorns that actually pluck out the potential that God has for you. Man, so so we can get strangled by life's worries. By and life's and worry. it's the enemy's ploy to make us so focused on worldliness, so yes. focused on our problems that we forget what's actually priority, which is Christ. Yeah, again, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, it says, therefore. And anytime you see the word therefore, you got to what? Know, know what, what it's, it's there, there for. for. Before that, he says, you cannot serve two masters, mm. either God or money. Okay, so you have to make a decision every day. Am I serving God or am I serving money? Yeah. Then he says, therefore, don't worry about your life. Why don't you have to worry about your life? Because you're serving God. Yeah. God yeah. takes care of his children. Mm -hmm. However... If you're serving money, you better worry about your life, man, because you're on your own. Yeah. He says, don't worry about what you're going to eat, drink and all these different things. Then he says, look at the birds of the air. I've never seen a bird struggling. Yeah, never. Like them birds, they, they just wait for you. If you had a picnic and yeah. you just leave for one second, mm -hmm. they yep. coming down, <laughs> swooping. <laughs> that was not a sound effect. It <laughs> hey, says, can any of you by worrying <laughs> add a single hour to your life? I'm trying to be spiritual, man. They messing up the podcast, man. It's all good. <laughs> bro, that was a chicken, big dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But think about this. We worry. I worry sometimes. You yeah. can't add a single hour to your life worrying. Man. Do you know that 90% of the stuff you worry about never happened? And so then he says, don't worry what you should eat, drink, or what you should wear. Unbelievers do this. Pagans yeah. do that. Yeah. So he's saying this. When you start to worry... You're acting like someone who doesn't know God. Wow. Wow. Think about that. Yeah. Because you think you're on your own. And then he goes on. He says what? He says, but seek the kingdom and his righteousness. All these things, all those things that unbelievers worry about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it says it will be given to you. So this is the strangled heart. Yeah. These are people who are growing in Christ, but when life happens man it's like the fruit of what god has for you get strangled out because you're so worried about things that he's supposed to take care of in your life yeah and, and i think at the end of the day when it's all said and done it's really about faith like yeah. it's really about faith and believing that god is actually going to do what he said he's going to do yeah that if i actually seek first the kingdom that mm -hmm. actually all the rest of the things that i stress about or could stress about they're going to be added unto me yeah. why is that, that so hard though Honestly, I think it's hard because like we have relationships. And again, we talked like in the last episode, we talked yep. about human relationship versus our relationship with God. Yep. I think our relationship with other people has mm -hmm. been strangled so much. There's been so much trauma. Like this person made a promise to me. They never came through on that promise. So now every time I look at a promise, I don't really see it as a promise. It's, it's a maybe, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so that kind of affects our relationship with the Lord. So I'm reading the Bible and it says this, but I can't actually believe it just because our relationships possibly have been so, so yes, damaged. Good. Yeah. And sometimes I guess, man, bad company corrupts good character. You, mm. you need to focus on who's around you. But man, that's why sometimes and we've been talking about it. I don't want nobody to call my phone like I'm good man. because all that extra stress, you know, can lead to you not believing the word of God. Man, yeah. so it's so important. It goes back to our first episode when it comes to you are here, it's to keep a soft heart. Yeah. Because if you develop a hard heart, you're no longer going to believe what God has for you. Yeah. Hundred percent. Now, one of the things I know about a soft heart is whenever your heart is soft, you're receptive. Mm -hmm. uh, you receive the word, and yeah. and one of the things about this group of people, if you're close to Christ, you're making him a priority in your everyday life. So it's that devotional. Yeah. Now, our mm -hmm. devotional life, it's important, and maybe you can talk about this a little bit. But how can we keep a fire and a passion inside of our devotional life? Because I mean, for some people, I've heard, you know. That it can, you know, kind of dwindle. That after a while, it's like, you know, maybe not interesting anymore, or this, this, and that. And so, what are some tips that you've used just over time? Yeah, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. There are some seasons where you're just gonna be disciplined, and you're not doing it out of delight, but it's out of duty. Mm. So there, I'm just gonna be honest. I about to say, you gotta say that again. Yeah. You gotta say that again. <laughs> there are some seasons. I wish I could say, since I've been following Jesus, like every day, I'm excited to get in yeah. the Word. I'm excited yeah. to pray. Sometimes it's just discipline. Come on. 
like sometimes we just did hard 75, right? Yeah. It's not like every single day I went to the gym, I was excited about right. it. Some days I was just mad. I just got my shoes on. <laughs> I'm just in the gym. Yeah. It was a whack workout, right. but I did it, yeah. right? There's sometimes I'm reading the word, like I don't even know what I read. I'm praying. I'm thinking about a million different things. But it's just showing up because when you don't show up, what happens? You're developing bad habits yeah. where you will no longer even pursue God anymore. Yeah, 100%. But for the most part, it says, delight yourself in the Lord, Psalms 37, 4, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Mm. So I have to do it out of delight. And here's the hard time because the way you approach God, the way I approach God may be different. Yeah, yeah. It's a relationship, though. So what works for you might not work for me yep. and vice versa. There's yep. principles. We need to pray. We need to read the word. But there's other things that we need to do in order to hear God's voice. I'm pretty sure you hear God's voice through music. Yeah, 100%. I hear God's voice through nature. So if I tried to hear God's voice the same way that you do, yeah, that's why you're going to get that like that. I heard God's voice. Like when I said that, like that was, <laughs> I heard him say a lot of things to me. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, nature, right? Yeah, that's nature. why I see yeah. when I'm in nature, I'm that's say, why I know. That's how I know. Must be. Yeah. No, but I think so so many times and and it's at least when for me, whenever I grew up, it's like when you are with God, you got to yeah. sit down at a desk, you got to yeah. lock yourself in a it room. It used to be me. Like candles, just, can't like and just the, just the word, just open the Bible and get in. Still there. to this day, we pray, I turn them lights <laughs> off, man. I just feel a little closer to right. the Holy Spirit. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> But I mean that it doesn't have to work like that for everybody. Yeah. And once I realized that, I felt this weight like fall off of me. Because whenever you think you can only hear God in a specific way, it's like you put shackles on yourself. And it's like if I can only hear him this way, like I just have to do it. But like you said, everybody hears him differently because yeah. it's about a relationship. And so, you know, you talk about your prayer walks all the time. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. For me, it's playing music. Like I can be in guitar center. I'm really just playing on the keys. And somebody thinks, oh, that sounds great. I'm actually like me and the Lord. We're having a moment right now. At guitar center. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm serious. Got tears coming down my eyes. I'm like, you okay, brother? I'm, like, I'm good. I'm it's allergies. I'm it's good. Allergies. Oh man, it's on sale. That's yeah, all crying. Man, now I'm going to say something that's going to contradict what I preach about, but it's true. I'm going to do it on the podcast. I wouldn't do it on Sunday. There's no scripture that says that we're supposed to have a quiet time. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Crickets. Yeah. Now, I do have a quiet time. Yeah. But I cannot tell everybody, you got to have a quiet mm -hmm. time or you're not hearing from God. Yeah. You know, because like I said, that might look differently sure. for everybody. Sure. Now, as long as you're praying, yeah. you know, as long as you're reading the word, fasting, doing other things. And there's so many different spiritual disciplines mm. that we can talk about. Yeah. But, you know, for me, I am like, get up early. We see Jesus get yeah. up early. You got to yeah. get up early in the morning. <laughs> yeah. 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 But are you on your best early in the morning? Yeah. Like you got to get in a space mm. for you when you're attentive. Yeah. Where you're saying, man, I'm attentive to hear the voice of God. And yeah. so you got to figure that out for yourself. It's a relationship. Yeah. And I, as long as it happens, like, that's the biggest. Yeah. That's the biggest point. As long, like, whatever that looks like for you, just make it happen. And, and that's the biggest point. Yeah. It's that relationship with you and the Lord. Yep. Yeah, man. All right. Let's keep it moving. Now, yep. how, do, how do we get to the place where stressors in life is not our only concern? Because mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing for this group of people. Like, we have fruit that's trying to be produced in our life, but the enemy knows us, and he'll throw some, you know, sticks and some logs in there to make us stumble. How do we get to the point where we overcome that? Or is there a point where we, you know, fully overcome that? I think a lot of the stress that's in our lives is because of the stress that we put upon ourselves. Mm. What do I mean by that? We add things to the calendar that God didn't want us to have on the calendar. All right, let's go. Let's talk and about it. And then... We don't have room for God. Yeah. I have been fighting, and when I say fight, the last two years to live a slow, unhurried life, and it's the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Like, you never see Jesus running in Scripture, like, at all. Yeah. Okay. What a prodigal son. The father comes out the house. He runs. Okay, that's a fake story, by the way. It was a parable. It wasn't a real story. Anyway, Amen. never mind. <laughs> but... <laughs> You never, Jesus was never in a hurry. Yeah. Lazarus died. He's like, all right, fellas, we'll be there in four days. Right. Like, just chilling. Yeah. And we're supposed to live a slow life, mm. but everything else is like, like we hear people say, you got to grind. Yep. Grind. Early grind. Get, the get rich or die trying. Mm -hmm. Even Christians say that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. And that's why you got a strangled heart. Yeah. 
because you don't have the capacity to live up to the potential, not that God has given you, that you think you have for yourself. Wow. And so God has given all of us a grace, our capacity. Yeah. Ephesians 4, verse 7, talks about this idea of he's given you a measure of faith. Yeah. Your measure of faith and my measure of faith is different, sure. right? In certain areas, you have more capacity than me. In certain areas, I have more capacity than you. Yeah. But if you try to keep up in every area with somebody else, and this is why comparison comes into play. Mm. Like, we're comparing ourselves, but you have a different grace than me. Yeah. The problem is you see everybody else's grace, but you don't see your own. You don't mm. see your own calling. You yeah. don't see your own purpose. And yeah. so you're so focused on somebody else. Like, I don't have to compete with you. Yeah. Because even if I did what you did, I wouldn't have the grace for it, and I'd be miserable. Yeah. So what we have to understand is, what is God calling me to do in this season? Who am I? And am I enough for myself? Yeah. But, I mean, I'm doing the work of God. I'm doing the work of God. Like every, like they say it's a Christian event, yeah. right? So I'm going to, I, they, it's a church event. I can't yeah. say no to the church, but like I'm yeah. doing the work of God. Like, yeah. so, so, so what would you say to somebody who says that? I'm going to say what you said yesterday, John chapter six, the work of God Come is on. to what? <laughs> believe. believe. That's the work yep. of God, brother. Yeah. You don't, you can get somebody else to preach. Yeah. But I need sleep, man. man. Listen, because I ain't going to be able to do what God's called me to do in the morning. Yeah, come on. Every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something. Every time yeah. you say no to something, you're saying yes to something. So even right now, if someone wants to eat with me, hey, Pastor, we go out to lunch, I got to run it through my filter. Like, okay, I got to drive a half hour, lunch taking about an hour, yeah. you talking, you're not going to listen to anything. Why am I saying this? Anything that I'm saying anyway. <laughs> I realize that, man. Yeah. Yeah. 80%, I'm just making a statistic up, 98% of the stuff that I say, 99% of the stuff that I say, people don't listen to anyway. Why? I don't even listen to my own advice. <laughs> so this isn't beneficial for either of yeah, us. Yeah. And so I'm just realizing, like, I can't be, like, so people say this, like, man, I can multitask, right? People say that all the time. Mm -hmm. But you can't multi-focus. And so what I mean by that is, wow. it's like, man, what am I focusing on in this season? So I wrote down, like, what are my priorities? And I'm just sticking with my priorities. So if someone says, hey, Ken, can you do this? Can you do this? I'm running it through the filters of what I've already prayed about. You can get another preacher. Yeah. You know, but my, my kids can't get another father. My wife can't get another husband. Yeah. I guess she could. Nah. She wouldn't enjoy her life. <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to keep that. Uh, hey, man. Clip it. No, um, <laughs> one of the things I know is that uh, diluted focus will give you diluted results. Mm -hmm. and, and and one of the things that I just want to say to some of us on here, because we just talked about like, you know, what, what work do we have to do? The Bible is very clear on family. It's family over ministry. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who have a family out there, like one of the things I've had to learn, I'm saying yes to all of these things, but it's impeding on date night. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I'm saying yes to all these things, but it's impeding on a specific individual time. Now, now hold, hold on, Reverend. Hold, hold hey, on. I, I heard hey, the word say somewhere. It ain't in the word, but I heard the word say if you take care of God's house, well, he'll take care of your house. Now, you telling me that your family is more important than the house of God? What, what I'm telling you what the word says. The word says, what, how, what say? how, how can I run God's house when my mm. own house is out of order? So mm, uh, uh, that's that's Bible. Okay, so well, what that, I'm going to do it's somewhere in there. What I'm going to do is take First care of my, my family. Yeah. Right. And so mm -hmm. I, I'm just saying, like so many times we look for purpose in life. Yeah. If you have any type of family, that's purpose. Like God has given yeah. you that family and that is your purpose. Yeah. I don't want a mega ministry in a storefront marriage. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't want my church to blow up. But then I go home and nobody wants me to be there. Yeah. Like they can get a different worship leader. You can have a different pastor yeah. preach a message. Like you don't need me at every single event. That's good. I told you, man, there was a couple of months ago, about a year ago, I was preaching and I was like, why am I here? <laughs> and I felt the Lord. I'm not making this said this is disobedience for you preaching this message because you didn't even ask me. Bruh. So you can be preaching the message. Dude. You can be doing worship yeah. with your hands lifted, Man. and it can be disobedience because you didn't even check with God. You didn't even ask. So you're outside of the will of God preaching the will of God. Thinking that you're trying to do the will of God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's crazy. So that means yeah. just practically, not even necessarily in ministry, when someone calls you yeah. to do something, like are you supposed to be doing it? The problem mm. is we're more loyal to people than we are to God's will. Yeah. Because we don't want to disappoint people. True. And then what happens is then Sunday come around, right? We're exhausted. Yep. I'm going to skip church. So think about this. Sunday is the first of the week. Yeah. It's the beginning of the week. We think it's the end of the week. 
Nope. So you're already exhausted the first day of the week. That lets you know that you're doing too much. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't take a Sabbath. We don't take a rest period. And so the Bible says in Hebrews chapter four, it says the children of Israel did not take a Sabbath rest because of a lack of faith. Man. And when I read that verse, oh I said, gosh. man, the reason I don't take a day off <laughs> is because I don't believe that God's going to make up the difference. Yeah. Man. And here's the thing, man. We serve a God that doesn't sleep nor slumber. So why should yeah. I stay up if he's going to stay up? Yeah. Yeah. And even that same God, when he created the earth, he rested on the last he, day. He, rest- he, he was trying to show us something. What he was, was he trying, showing us? He was trying to show us what rest is, what it means to rest. He was trying to show us an example of what resting looks like. It's a spiritual thing to sleep. Yeah. That's, that's I mean, I'll tell you, man, 80% of the sin that is going on in your life can be stopped by going to sleep. <sighs> That's what Eve should have did. Hey Amen. Just go to been sleep. In the bed. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Once it get dark out, just go to sleep. Yeah. 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 Man. So that's close to Christ. Yeah. Now we're going to be talking about like Christ centered. Hallelujah. We speaking oh, in tongues. Yeah. We we oh, going yes. in the deep end. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. Christ centered folk. Christ centered. So Christ centered, obviously, are people who center their lives around Christ. Yeah. They put Christ first on the calendar. Mm -hmm. Like everything's about Christ. They know theology. They know worship. They know. And so this is the scripture where it talks about now that the seed came and it multiplied because their heart was in the right place. So that means I guess they're perfect. So we can get off the podcast. No, there's some issues. There's some issues with people who are Christ centered. Mm. People who are Christ centered. this, This is what the survey said. Not me. You love God. But you have a problem loving other people. Oh, my. Because right. some people who are Christ centered, like they know theology, yep. they don't even go to church because you don't even think people can teach you anymore. Mm. Well, well. And so you have all this head knowledge, but yet it becomes dead knowledge because you don't give it to anybody else. So now you have people who are exploring Christ, growing in Christ. Like, I'm just out here. Nobody can answer my questions because you got all the Christ-centered people meeting at Panera Bread Sunday mm. morning. <laughs> <laughs> Starting their own side. Starting their own thing. <laughs> Instead of helping a brother out who yeah. needs your help. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Man. Look at Titus chapter 2. It talks about the older women should be teaching yep. the younger women. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you look at someone, instead of judging, look how she dressed on our board. Well, teach her. Yeah. 100%. Can I just talk to some older people real quick? Season saints. Let's go. Oh, whatever. Man, your best days are ahead, yeah. right? You should be, man, serving in the church because you have an opportunity to look back at people and say, that used to be me. Yeah, 100%. That used to be me. And so we think there's no such thing as retirement in Scripture. No, definitely not. We think we get 50, 60 years old. I don't got to do nothing in church. No. No, that's the time to really step up. Yeah. I need some Annas in the house that come just on. come to the house of the Lord and just pray. Just pray. And fast. Prayer warriors. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And then you look at Jesus. I mean, Jesus literally knew everything. He had all the head knowledge in the yeah. world, but what did he choose to do? He chose to walk out and said, you come and follow me. Right. Yeah. Cause I want to yeah. teach you something. I want to show you a little something washing yeah. feet, like the different things that Jesus did because he wanted to impart his knowledge of God and of the kingdom into others. Yeah. 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 So people who are, close to Christ or people who are Christ centered, they understand they gave their life to Christ. They gave it away. Yeah. They decided that Christ is first. Their identities in Christ. They believe the authority of the Bible. They're reading the Bible every day. However, sometimes we neglect people. And that's so important that oftentimes I just know people personally who know more word than me, mm. but like barely go to church Yeah, because they think they know everything And what did he say? By this, in John chapter 13, they will know you're my disciple. Not by how much scripture you know. Nope. By the love that you show other people. Yeah. So, man, I would just encourage you, if you say that you're Christ-centered, are you loving other people? Are you discipling other people? Or are you just with people who think, look, and act like you in November, vote just like you? Well. Because love is predicated on loving someone who disagrees with you. Yep. That's how you it's, know if it, you truly yeah, love Yeah, it's so easy to love someone. It's so easy to love people in my family when yeah. we, they think exactly like me, but the true denominator of love, love doesn't keep what? A record, record of wrongs. Of wrong. yeah. So that means you feel wronged. So now I got to love you in spite how I feel for you. And so, man, I just see 
a lot of people who would say they're Christ centered. What you mean? Man, it's like, <laughs> but just don't love other yeah. people. Yeah. And so that's so important. So we need you because there's a group of people who are exploring Christ. And there's a group of people who are growing in Christ who have questions. And as we as a church continue to grow, it just can't be two or three people. No. We, I want to be able to say, man, here, here's here's brother Johnny, here's yeah. brother so and so, yeah, man. For the next year, he's gonna disciple you. Got you. And so, man, that's what we're trying to get to. Yeah, and I think it's a lot of just moving ego out of the way. Like, yeah. a, as you know, a lot of head knowledge, as you know, a lot of scripture. It's really just moving your pride aside, yeah. and and it's really remembering that you used to be there. Like you said, yeah. that's so huge. Like that's literally the message of the gospel. You were a sinner. Right. You you lost. You made a lot of mistakes. You were doing the same thing that person was doing 15, 20 years ago. And so it's really just moving like your pride aside, like, all right, how can I help this person become a better follower, a better disciple of Christ? Yeah, I'm about to say something. I'm going to say it. (laughs) Do it. I'm going to say why am I thinking this, man? I'm going to say it. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Uh, (laughs) So many times people are judgmental to someone. I cannot believe she got a child out of wedlock. The only difference is the condom broke. Well, clip it. I said it. Clip it. I said it. You did the exact same thing. Man. And now you're judging them for having a child. Come on. Come on. <laughs> the only difference is you had prenatal vitamins. Mm. What am I talking about? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is that. on the podcast. Yeah, this is on the podcast. It's you gonna get, yeah, it's in there. Come it's on. There. Hey, man. I don't know why, man. Bro, but it's true. Yeah. We're judgmental. We're being judgmental to different people. Instead of a Christ centered person to understand, man, that was me before. Yeah. You know, let me help you out. Yeah. Let, let, let's go a little, a little deeper because we are, you know, Christ centered. And I hear it a lot of the times. Well, I hear what you're saying, Pastor, but I just I have the spirit yeah. of discernment. Oh, God. I have the spirit of like, and I hear a lot of Christ centered people say this. I have the spirit of discernment. I, I can see the intentions of that person. And I know what. So I'm not judging. I'm discerning. Okay. What would you say to this I, I'm deep Christ centered person? We actually used to have <laughs> a spiritual assessment, yeah. and I took it off. Mm. There is no scripture that says that you have the gift of discernment. Let me just say this: discernment, we have it by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay. It says a gift of discerning spirits. Those are two different things, yeah. by the way. Come on. When people say they got the gift of discernment, it's actually the spirit of judgment. Yeah. You're just judging people. I got yep. the gift of discernment. Something, something wrong with him. <laughs> yeah. They start sniffing. Something <laughs> wrong with him. What you sniffing for? <laughs> you judging them. Yeah, it's, dis- it's discerning spirits. You know, yeah. people say, I got the gift of discerning spirits, but you can't discern your foul spirit. I was about to like, say, <laughs> man, there's scripture for this. Like, yeah. like focus on the plank in your own eye before you try yeah. to get the twig out of your brothers, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I just think, I feel like we're beating up on the Christ center. Loki, Loki, yeah. a little bit. You love Jesus, yeah. amen. <laughs> but do you love others? Yeah. Do you and love so others? let me give some props to people who are Christ center. We're beating you up a little bit. some props okay. there, though. Because we say Christ center. <laughs> Y'all suck. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, honestly, I just think as a Christ center person, like, you really start to just see yourself, like, in the sin nature, like, for, for what it is. Like, you really know that, like, you're saved by grace. Like, it's only through Jesus' blood that I'm yeah. here, that I'm able to be here. And so, like, that's the heart behind the Christ, or at least that should be the heart behind someone who's Christ-centered. Yeah, but let me pick on him a little bit. But sometimes <laughs> it's like the dude who's in the hood, then he get, like, an NFL contract, and he like, I ain't never going back to the hood. Forget all them people. Yeah, you yeah. just want to make sure you're not that Yes, dude. 100%. <laughs> 100%. So a person now who's Christ-centered – They love Jesus. They put Jesus first. They start with Jesus on the calendar. He's the first thing they put on the calendar. Mm. They have a rhythm of even coming to church. And here's the thing that I talk about, man. It's about, regardless of what category you're in, creating a culture of coming to church. If you wake up in the morning and say, and roll over and say, baby, we going to church today. You don't say that in the morning on Monday. Hey, baby, am I going to work today? Right. You got to create a culture. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's not awkward mm-hmm. that even when you're praying, your kids are like, what right. are we doing? What's happening here? Yeah. Right? So a culture, it just happens. Mm-hmm. Man, I can't remember the last time I asked my wife, are we going to church today? Yeah. I just get up and then we go. Yeah. Just like you're getting up, kids going to school, getting up, going to work. So Christ-centered people, you do a great job of building a culture within your house, yeah. building a culture with your kids. Yeah. But also, I, I would encourage all of us, no matter what group you're in, 
allow your kids to go on their own journey. Mm, yeah, that's good. Don't force anything on your kids. Yeah. But show them what Scripture says in a way that they can understand. Let me give you an example. If your child gets in trouble in school, show them what the Word of God says. Daddy, I didn't do anything. That wasn't my fault. Well, Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise, become wise. Walk with fools, your life will fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> so are you walking with a fool? Well, that's why you're in trouble. Yeah. Once they start to see how Scripture makes an impact in their everyday life, yeah. then they'll start to say, oh, this can make a difference. And that's why I yeah. think some people do not know how to take a sermon and make it practical in their everyday life mm -hmm. or read the Word of God and break it down where it makes a difference in their relationships and their resources. Yeah, and then you can even just take it and, and like you said, make it a lifestyle. Like you can show that you're Christ-centered through yeah. your lifestyle. Um, it was great because probably about a week ago, um, just the culture in my house is even starting to shift. Like me, uh, I pray every morning, and mm -hmm. I knew that it became a culture of prayer in my house whenever my wife, she just came in and she sat with me and she just started praying. Like I was doing my own thing, but she came in and she sat in the corner and she was like, we're going to do this together. Like that's yeah. like what creating a culture looks like. Like it's not awkward. It's not weird. And I felt comfortable. She felt comfortable. So it, even just like modeling that yeah. can help somebody else to start progressing on their journey as well. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, we talked about these four different groups of people exploring Christ, growing in Christ, close to Christ and Christ centered. Which group are you? Would you Which put that you? in the comments? Drop We're it down. all on different journeys. Yeah. All of them are growing in Christ. There's things that we need to work on, but we got to understand that just like a GPS will, you punch in those coordinates, it will get you to your destination. When it comes to following Jesus, you never arrive. Yeah. You yeah. never arrive at all. He always has more for you. The moment you think you arrive, that's when you're actually not progressing yeah. anymore. So I want to encourage you guys. Lock in. Let us know in the comments. Come on. We want this to be a conversation. And next time we're on here, when we talk about a sermon series, we're going to talk about a new series we're preaching right now called Triggers. Triggers. Dealing with trauma. I cannot wait to talk about that. So if you have any questions for that, drop that in the comments. Drop them down. And we will be back shortly. All right. See you all soon. See you.